This is the fifth video on concrete slabs. At the end of this video, you will be able to estimate the needed depth of a one-way slab. To obtain an estimate of the effective depth, there are three criteria that you have to follow. The first one is comfort or slenderness. The second one is stability or uh, strength. And the third one is durability or we can also call it functionality. The comfort is uh, determined by slenderness, which is the span divided by the effective depth. The stability is uh, known by, by strength and which is directly proportional to the effective depth. And the uh, functionality uh, is governed by the concrete cover and is, is related to durability. The uh, limit of uh, span depth ratio uh, is based on the maximum allowable deflection and it's given by uh, two formulas. One is for uh, heavenly reinforced uh, slabs and the other one is for uh, normal reinforced slabs. It is a formula which is dependent on the reinforcement ratio and the concrete quality and of a coefficient k, which is a factor to take into account the different structural systems. The deflection should be limited to span divided by 250 in the serviceability limit state uh, quasi permanent. The factor K in the, in the above formula uh, is equal for simply supported beams and is, for instance, uh, 1.5 for uh, the interior spam of uh, one-way or two-way spanning slabs. For highly stressed concrete with an enforcement ratio of 1.5, these are the uh, slenderness ratios. And for uh, uh, slightly stressed concrete with an enforcement ratio of 0.5, these are uh, the other uh, uh, slenderness ratios. So you can start off by guessing or estimating the needed depth of a slab by using the slenderness ratios mentioned here. You can bring that together in one table and then you will see for a one or two way slab spanning, uh, spanning simply supported slab, it's L over 14 or L over 20, span divided by 14 or span divided by 20. And for a cantilever, uh, it will be like a balcony, for instance, it will be L over 6 or L over 8. In, in a practical way, you can always use span divided by 15. But it's not span, it's the zero span. And the span that I'm mentioning here is for a cantilever, it's two times the span in reality. For an interior span, for a continuous slab, it's 0.7 times the span. And for the end span, it is 0.85 the span. So if you use this formula, then you always end up with span zero divided by 15. It gives you a very quick estimate of the needed depth of a slab. For stability, you use the reduced bending moment and the corresponding reinforcement. And you have three choices. You can choose for an optimum height of 
the slab or the optimum depth of the slab, which means that the uh, um, strain in concrete and in the uh, steel is at their maximum at the same time. So this is optimum use of materials. Or you can choose for ductility, which means that you want to be sure that the uh, steel is yielding. Or you can use rotation capacity, which means that the total uh, compressive depth in the cross section is not too big. But this is more for uh, continuous slabs or for uh, uh, beams. For each uh, reduced bending moment, you have a compression height and you have the lever arm, which is the zeta. Uh, zeta is set over D. This is the lever arm. So if you make a choice in your design, you, these numbers are fixed. To put it in a formula, we obtain the following. This is the definition of reduced bending moment with FCD, the design value of the compressive strength of the concrete equals to 0.85 FCK divided by 1.5. It, the units are in millimeter, megapascal, and kilonewton meter per meter. Then, if you uh, combine this, then you uh, arrive at a at, at, uh, formulation of the reduced bending moment with those units as this one. And you can re uh, organize the equation by taking D out of it because that's what we want to know. We want to know what is the effective depth that we need. Then you arrive at this formula with MSD in kilonewton meter per meter and FCK in megapascal. And mu, the reduced bending moment, well, that's to the, uh, the designer to choose. He can now choose for ductility, then it's 0.371. He chooses for an optimum material use, then he uses 0.1. 87, or he can use rotation capacity and it's 0.296, or even any other number, it's to the choice of the designer. The three strength criteria can now be rewritten in a very simply to use formula, taking into account that D is in millimeters the bending moment in kilonewton meter per meter, and the concrete quality in megapascal. Often we will use for the, the optimum value uh, a figure like 100 times the square root of. We'll notice immediately that the uh, ductility depth requirement is a Maximum is, maxim, is, is minimal 0.7 times the optimum uh, depth requirement. So this is the minimum depth that for a certain load of a slab. The rotation for rotation capacity is, is almost like 80% of the, the optimum value. To give you uh, an idea, when you have a D optimum of 20 millimeters, then the rotation height of the slab will be 160 and the ductility height 140 millimeters. Below that you cannot go. One can wonder what is now the maximum uniform distributed load that I can put on a one-way slab which has to fulfill a certain strength criteria and a certain uh, slenderness criteria. We have seen for the strength that this is a value uh, there are three values or three, three criteria that you can use. That's why I use the term ST instead of the three figures. Slenderness is L over D. It depends on the configuration of the conditions of the slab. There's a slenderness requirement. This is the strength requirement. Okay, now I'm looking for the maximum load that I can put on it, maximum uniform distributed load. So we uh, assume it's a one-way slab, so we assume it's uh, simply supported on both sides. If not, then this formula changes and you can have a similar uh, uh, reasoning to, to develop the formula for Q. 
So MSD is then QL, QL squared over 8. Just take in mind, we will use these as units, kilonewton meter, megapascal meter, and kilonewton per square meter. And if you, when you put those numbers into this formula, then you will see that, and you, you uh, rework it to, to get Q, the uniform distributed load, then you see this is the formula. This is some, somehow peculiar, because it seems that the maximum uniform distributed load on the slab submitted to slenderness, a given slenderness, and a given strength criteria is independent of the span. There's no span in this formula. So without knowing the span, you can already decide what is the maximum load for a certain slab. You even do not have the thickness of the slab in it. Now this is because that you that is because you use SL and ST, the strength that's 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 obvious, eh? but SL the uh, span and the depth of the slab is included in this term SL. But it is a very uh, useful formula to estimate the maximum uniform distributed load on the slab. We will give you an example uh, at a concrete strength of uh, C3037 and a slenderness as L over 20, which is very common. The maximum uniform distributed load of this slab is 64 kilonewton per square meter in ULSB at optimal use of the materials. So I, you don't need to know the span. You don't need to know the depth of the slab. The only thing that you know now is that this slab with a slenderness of L over 20 and optimal use of materials, it can never get more than 64 kilonewton per square meter. Uh, in this formula, SL was 20 and SF was 97, and with optimal use of material, then it's 97. And then you can see if you apply this formula, you end up with 64 kilonewton per square meter. You can also put it in another way. You can rework the formulas and then you can say the maximum uniform distributed load in ULS, in kilonewton per square meter, on a slab, is approximately 25,500 divided by the square of slenderness at optimum use of materials. We will give you now an example of how to estimate the effective depth of a slab, of a one-way slab. We have here a cross-section of a classroom in a rural area, second floor. This is a beam. This is brickwork. Uh, continuing of or and this is also uh, some masonry to support the floor it is the it is a concrete slab with a floor finishing of 10 centimeters with a weight proper weight of 23 kilonewton per cube and now we want to know what is the needed floor depth and we use as a criteria the optimal use of materials so we can do it in a very quick way we first look at the effective span. The effective span is uh, 422 centimeters of 4 meter 22. It is the half, is the maximum, sorry, the minimum of half of the thickness of the slab and half of the thickness of the supports. But we don't know the thickness of the slab, so we take half the thickness of the supports. But that's me, that, that's me, that means that the depth of the slab will be bigger than 300 millimeters on this side. Otherwise, it will be less the effective span. Okay, we have to check that afterwards if this is correct. As slenderness ratio, we take L over D equals to 20 because it's a, a simply supported beam. And when you take L over 20, it means that D must be bigger than 21 centimeters, the effective depth. Then we can calculate the strength. The load is the proper weight of uh, the slab. And we take 25 uh, centimeters now because we round it off. And this is just an estimate. We round it off. The um, 0.10 of concrete sheet on top of it, the surfacing. And we multiply by 1.35 because it's a permanent load. 
times the mobile loan is the classroom, so it's 3 kilonewton per square meter times 1.5, it gives me 16 kilonewton per meter. It's in fact per square meter, but it's per meter per meter. The bending moment is uh, QL squared over 8, it's 35.7, and the optimum height that I need for strength is equal to 145 millimeters. But we started with 25. Uh, the D was 21, the H was 25, so we started with 25, but it's only 14.5 centimeters. First, we look at the functionality and the nominal uh, concrete cover is its interior, so it's EI, so it means that the concrete cover is 15 millimeters plus the maximum size of the reinforcement. We take 12 for a slab, so it will be 27 millimeters as, uh, max as concrete cover. The total height of the slab, of total depth of the slab, is then 145, the optimum, plus C nominal 27, plus the point of gravity of the reinforcement, it's the half of 12, so it's 6. In total, we have 178 millimeters. But we started here with 25, so that will be all right. It should be bigger than 21, but take care of it. This is just an estimate, just an estimate to get started. For strength, it, it's okay. So we can take here 180 millimeters as estimated height of the estimated depth of the slab. The effective span changes now because it, uh, uh, the, because H is, is smaller than 300 millimeters, so the effective span is in fact 4 meters 16 instead of 4 meters 22. So in reality, we have to redo the calculation, but you will end up with the same number. 